Good afternoon. Thank you for being here in City Hall. As I continue to speak, I'm hoping that my voice starts to amplify in any given second here. There it goes. Uh, the June 3rd, 2019 City Council meeting of the full City Council will now come to order. It's 2 o'clock p.m. I'm Bruce Harrell, President of the Council. Will the clerk please call the roll? Mosqueda? Here. O'Brien? Here. Pacheco? Swant? Here. Bagshaw? Here. Gonzalez? Here. Herbold? Here. Juarez? President Harrell? Here. Eight present. Thank you very much. There's no objection. Today's introduction and referral calendar will be adopted. Hearing no objection, today's introduction and referral calendar is adopted. If there's no objection, today's agenda will be adopted. Hearing no objection, today's agenda is adopted. The minutes of the May 20th, 2019 Special City Council meeting have been reviewed. And if there's no objection, the minutes will now be, be signed. Hearing no objection, the minutes are being signed. Let the record flow. Councilmember Pacheco has joined us. Presentations. We're very pleased to have Councilmember Gonzalez, Gonzalez's leadership on a proclamation relating to Gun Violence Awareness Day. And Councilmember Gonzalez, you have the floor. Uh, thank you, um, Mr. President, for the opportunity to present this proclamation recognizing June 7th, 2019 as Gun Violence Awareness Day. As I mentioned during council briefing um, this morning, it was my hope to be able to um, present the proclamation during full council today. I wanted to just take an opportunity to, uh, in, in light in of and in the aftermath of both um, some gun violence here in our own community across the city, but also an increase in uh, mass shootings across the country, wanted to take an opportunity to read directly from the proclamation. Um, so with your indulgence, I'd like to be able to do that. Please do, council member. Thank you. Um, whereas every day approximately 100 Americans are killed by gun violence and more than 200 sustain non-fatal firearm injuries, and whereas across King County more people are killed each year by gun violence than car crashes, whereas the City of Seattle and specifically the Seattle Police Department works to protect public safety in the communities they serve, and whereas despite concerted efforts by the City of Seattle in 2018, there were 312 shootings, 13 of which were fatal, and whereas recent gun violence has further raised the sense of urgency around the need for sensible gun control measures measures and redoubled efforts to ensure community safety. Whereas the King County young adults, uh, whereas in King County, young adults between the ages of 18 to 29 comprise about half of both firearm homicide victims and suspects and disproportionately affect young adults of African American, Black, American Native, Indian, and Latinx descent. And whereas the Seattle City Council unanimously passed Ordinance 124833 in August 2015, imposing an ammunition and firearm sales tax, the proceeds of which are used for the continued fight against gun violence in our communities and the study of data-driven gun violence prevention programs. Whereas the July 7, 2018, on July 7, 2018, the city passed Ordinance 119266, requiring lawfully authorized gun owners to safely store their weapons in a locked container. And whereas this ordinance was also accompanied by Ordinance 125621, which expanded the penalties for failing to report a stolen weapon and in instances where an, in, and in instances where an unreported stolen weapon is used to commit a crime. Whereas in November 2018, Washington State voters over overwhelmingly adopted Initiative 1639, which made a number of changes to Washington's firearms laws, including raising the minimum wage to purchase a gun to 21, adding background checks, increasing waiting periods, and enacting storage requirements. And whereas by wearing orange on June 7th, Americans will come together to raise awareness about gun violence and honor the lives and lost human potential of Americans stolen by gun violence. And whereas the city of Seattle renews its commitment to reduce gun violence and pledge to do all we can to keep firearms out of the wrong hands and encourage responsible gun ownership to help keep our children and our communities safe. Now, therefore, the Seattle City Council and Mayor of Seattle do hereby proclaim June 7th, 2019 to be Gun Violence Awareness Day. Mm. Thank you, Councilman McConsell. And I'm not sure if our reps from the Alliance for Gun Responsibility, oh, there you are, okay. <laughs> um, so um, at this point, I'd like to, um, uh, Mr. President, if I could ask that the council rules be suspended to allow me an opportunity to present this proclamation to Kristen Ellingbo and Dylan O'Connor, representing the Alliance for Gun Responsibility, and to allow them to address the city council if they wish. Is there, uh, before we suspend the rules, would any other council members want to say any remarks on Council Member Gonzalez's uh, proclamation? I want to make sure everyone has an opportunity. I just wanted, just, Council Member Baxter, please. Thank you. Um, 
for the Washington Alliance for Gun Responsibility, that organization got started about two days after Sandy Hook in 2012. I want to acknowledge the good work you've done. Thank you for your leadership, for all those who have participated, and I'm really glad that you brought this proclamation. So I'll see you on Friday in Orange. Thank you. And if there's no objection, the rules will be suspended. Allow Councilman Gonzalez to present the proclamation. Thank you, Councilman Gonzalez. I get a picture of all of you together. Oh, That'd what be do you great. want? Right here is right here. Like, all right. I get to put that to you guys. Yeah. That's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Thank you. And you guys are welcome to say something if you want to. You're good? All right. Thank Look at you. that. <laughs> thank you, Councilmember Gonzalez, and thank you for your community work there. This is meaningful work. Okay, this time we'll take public comment on items that appear on today's agenda or our introduction from referral calendar or our 2019 work program. And public comment will be accepted for 20 minutes. I'll call you out in the order that you signed. I have two speakers that have signed up. Our four speakers that have signed up, I'm sorry. We have uh, first Marguerite Richard, followed by David Haynes, number one and number two. Yes, good day, everyone. Um, very interesting. We had the judge here. So Joe Brown had to educate me on free speech. And uh, I don't know, with that being in mind, uh, I think I'm going to keep on speaking just like I told you. And then if you got a problem with me, you can contact uh, Judge Brown, Rizzi Islam, Dr. Umar Johnson, and anybody else that was in the room, in the birth of Landis room, when we had conversation with the streets. And I think that's in line with your program and stuff, since you was talking about gun violence. Huh? I, I don't know, because you come down here, you chop up people's speech, make them have to uh, write up different things in their brain and say, oh, did I get that right? Because these people like to trespass you when they don't uh, like something. And the something is something that maybe Judge Brown, you didn't like what Judge Brown said. And he's the judge. Remember that pig meat? Here come the judge. Everybody know that I am the judge. Here come the judge. Huh? So that's, that's what I'm talking about. This is 2019. We, we're still dealing with issues surrounding all kinds of types of violence and stuff like that. Mm, gang bangers, you name it. Huh? But some of the stuff that I see that you have the power to do to enforce the law. You don't do it yourself, but you worried about a gangbanger. You worried about somebody with a gun and the way you treat us is worse than a gun, huh? The kind of poison that you throw out is worse than the most deadly poison on the face of this earth. Get it? Because we couldn't, we couldn't violate our oath five times and not be in prison locked up somewhere, dude. They do something with us, huh? If we violated an oath that you violate every time when I come in and out of here. Thank you, Mr. Shard. Our next <laughs> yep. speaker is David Haynes. Has City Council gone overboard with historic preservation of dilapidated buildings, ensuring 21st century Seattle will always be stuck in the past? Just remember, we needed MHA pre-2008 economy, yet we're still waiting for what is concerningly going to be watered down with cheap fees to line the pockets of politically collect connected nonprofits unqualif unqualified to build proper homes. Please incorporate the pedestrian priority at First and Pike Street Market to dial down the toxic, combustionable, loud traffic driving over the cobblestones, making so much noise it's annoying to go to that magazine rack. In fact, denying that traffic would be great because it would gets on the food of the skin of like the friggin fruit over at the market. I hope city council isn't further forsaking the homeless by focusing on historic preservation because it's an easier political support to garner. We still need a mass firing at the government and non-government social welfare agencies 
And I dare say, still you need to vote to appoint Jason Johnson, the permanent director, with the authority to fire the corrupt racist employees. Jason, Jason Johnson is qualified and highly competent. Oh, shit. <clears throat> In order for the historic preservation to work, you have to dial down the amount of 21st century driving and speeding through First and Pike significantly to celebrate a more peaceful, quieter time without the truck speeding over that outdated cobblestone creating a PTSD abuse of children's eardrums. Thank you. Okay, our next speaker will be Jacob, followed by Troy S. Uh, please forgive me, I have social anxiety, so I'm reading something that uh, uh, helped me get through this. My name is Jacob DeFair. I'm here today as a volunteer for you, Unified Seattle, and I'm making this statement today after myself and fellow volunteers spent some time yesterday cleaning up around and an encampment in the Soto area. Our group disposed of countless dirty needles and scattered trash lying next to large piles of overflowing trash bags left on the street. We witnessed the undeniable con con control addiction has over the encampment's residents who were lacking water but not drugs. This is not just a homeless crisis, this is a drug crisis. Low barrier sh sh shack encampments like the Lake Union encampment in South Lake Union that allow drug use are only pushing its residents deeper into addiction and deeper into chronic homelessness without any form of treatment or resources. To transition into permanent housing, those suffering will only continue to be enslaved to their addictions with no hope of getting off the streets. Seattle needs to focus on addressing the root causes of homelessness for some that means treatment for drug use, other mental illness. For others, financial mentorship without the help homeless individuals need there will be no way out for them and no way out for our city. We need solutions, not shacks. Thank you, Jacob. Thank you. Our last speaker sign up is Troy S. Hello, my name. This one? Yeah, I'm Troy. One. So I was also at this uh, cleanup at this homeless camp yesterday. Um, we did pick up tons of garbage and needles and, um, and along the camp. You know, there was the tents and everything, and it's like, if you guys were able to put a dumpster around that place or something, you know, it, uh, I know these people would be more than willing to clean up the garbage around there, the mess around there, you know, it's just, it's how they're living. I lived like that once myself, but um, the communities around there, you know, if, you, if you're driving a Benz or something, and you pull up, instead of being scared of these people, you need to get eye level with us, with them, and just let them know hey, I'm here to help you, I can help you, you know, show that you care instead of, you know, pe people judge people and they say the things that they say and it's, it's just, it's nonsense, you know, we're all the same, right? And, and we have our addictions and we do what we do, but we, people just need to come together and they just need to, you know, learn how to love, share, give, all that. Um, a lot of us aren't fortunate as others and it's hard to get, get into a new life, get in, change our lives, you know. Some people are broke, some people aren't, but the more help that the community and everybody around us gives, and you know, that's what we need. That's how, that's how we're gonna straighten this world up or this, these cities, whatever, just you know, stop enabling us and just help us out. Show that you care, you know, reach out a hand, something like that. That's all we ask for. That's how you're gonna clean up the streets. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank all of you for your testimony. That will conclude our public testimony section, and we'll move to the payment of the bills portion of the agenda. Please read the title. Council Bill 119536, a property mine to pay certain claims in order in the payment thereof. I move to pass Council Bill 119536. Second. It's been moved and seconded. The bill passed. Any comments? Please call the roll on the passage of the bill. Mosqueda? Aye. O'Brien? Aye. Pacheco? Aye. Sawant? Aye. Bagshaw? Aye. Gonzalez? Aye. Herbold? Aye. Juarez? Aye. President Harrell? Aye. Nine in favor, none opposed. The bill passed. The chair will sign it. Please read the report of the Gender Equity and Safe Communities, New Americans, and Education Committee. 
The report of the Gender Equity, Safe Communities, New Americans and Education Committee, Agenda Item 1, Council Bill 119513, relating to the City of Seattle's Paid Family Care Relief Program, amending sections 4.29.010, 0.020, 0 0.030, and 0 0.070 of Seattle Municipal Code. The committee recommends the bill pass as amended. Councilmember Gonzalez. Thank you. Uh, Council President Harold, colleagues Rachel and Aaron Alder, and members of the public. It is with both a heavy heart and immense joy that I advance Council Bill 119-513 as amended in committee, otherwise known as B's Law, for a vote by the full council today. If approved, this bill will correct a gap and oversight in our existing paid family care program applicable to municipal employees and their families like the Alders. It will do so by doing the following. First, it defines qualifying death to include the death of a child or the death of a domestic partner or spouse who died from childbirth or from complications related to childbirth. Second, if there is a qualifying death, then it will allow a parent or surviving domestic partner or spouse the ability to access paid family care leave benefit of up to four weeks without drawing down vacation or sick leave within 12 months of that qualifying event. The City Budget Office has estimated that this policy change does not have a significant fiscal impact and can be implemented without additional budget appropriation by the City Council. As I mentioned during council briefing, this is not a legislative fix to a hypothetical scenario. We have had multiple occasions to discuss the specific circumstances of Rachel and Aaron's loss of their daughter, Beatrice, a short 36, af 36 hours after her arrival into this world. We have seen the pictures of B. We've heard the heartwarming stories of the profound love that B gave her moms in that short window of life. We are now bearing witness to a legacy that will leave an indelible mark on our city's family-friendly work policies. I am honored to play a very small role in advancing that legacy today. Rachel and Aaron had many choices in the aftermath of the loss of B and learning that our family leave policies were inadequate for the needs of their family. They chose to effectuate change to effectuate change by contacting their union, ProTech, and sharing their grief as an example and catalyst for change, for positive change for themselves and for future families. As a result, today we take a final vote on this legislation that more fully recognizes the realities of the sudden loss of a child. Our city employees should be able to focus on healing with their, uh, with their families in these moments. And B's law will provide qualifying employees with four paid weeks to do so. We know that the healing of losing someone, especially a young child, will take a lot longer than four weeks. But four paid weeks is certainly more than the three days that you all had to come together and to mourn and to be prepared for what the future would bring. I want to thank Council Member Mosqueda for her partnership on advancing this law, and to Sejal Parikh and her office for her tremendous and tireless commitment to finding a solution for the alders and all of our city workers. And of course, one last thank you publicly to Rachel and Aaron for your courage and commitment to sharing your moment of personal grief to effectuate change in the name of B. And with that, uh, the Jesna Ed Committee recommends that the full council adopt Council Bill 119513, otherwise known forevermore as B's Law. Thank you, Councilmember Gonzalez. Any comments or questions? Councilmember Mosqueda? Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I'm incredibly proud to be the co sponsor of B's Law. As you heard, B's Law is a policy that will provide time off for city employees for the loss of a child and the emotional and physical recovery for families going through the loss of their child or the loss of a birthing partner. And this is just the beginning. I want to thank Rachel and Aaron. Thank you again for your advocacy, for being here yet again to see this policy now put into statute. Without you sharing your story time and time again over the last year and a half, without your persistence to make sure that no family has to go through what you did, we would not be here and many other families would be suffering the same loss and the same heartbreak. 
But this policy now makes the changes that you've been asking for for a very long time. It provides time off if you lose your child. For the emotional and physical recovery that you and your family have gone through, we want to make sure that that unimaginable pain is not felt by another family, making the impossible decision of having to go back to work so that you can earn a living when you're trying to grieve and recover. We want to make sure as an employer that we make sure that those who work for the city are able to come back to work when they are ready and that the time that they have is paid time off so that they can grieve and recover. This is the right thing to do. I want to thank uh, Councilmember Gonzalez for her leadership on this, for her office, and thank you uh, for recognizing as well uh, Sejal Parikh, our Chief of Staff, who's been engaged in this, with this, with you on this issue. I'm very excited to see this move forward. Councilmember Gonzalez outlined the comprehensive components in this law, but I think I just want to underscore three of the critical policies that you all helped to make sure that we changed in the policy as it came down. One is you are no longer required to draw down your existing sick time or vacation time. I hate the concept that people would have to draw down leave that we have fought so hard for, leave that's important for sick time, leave that's important for uh, rest and recovery for vacation. We have these vacation and leave time policies for sick leave for important reasons, and the loss of a child is no vacation. You should not have to use that time at this critical moment, and we've changed it so that there's no drawdown policy. We've also made sure that you don't have to use this leave concurrently with family medical leave in the event of a qualifying death. This is really incredibly important to keep that policy separate and to create its own bucket. And then lastly, as you've heard, um, we have really made sure that the qualifying death is a definition that includes the death of a child, a spouse, or domestic partner as a result of a childbirth. And I want to thank you for your willingness to include that component in here as well as we think about how families may grieve during this moment, um, especially around the birth of a child, and to make sure that bereavement leave is kind of more conceptually applied to who that might apply to. And critically, that we've used terms like birthing partner so that we're inclusive of all families. So thank you for your leadership on this. Thank you for your openness to some of these changes that we were suggesting. And thank you for um, helping us to really underscore that our existing bereavement policy is unacceptable. One day, as you had um, with B, is not a significant amount of leave. So we will continue to work here at the city to make sure that our bereavement policies as a whole better reflect what families actually need. Uh, as, that, as I said earlier, we believe this is just the beginning of having um, the opportunity to address our bereavement leave policies as a whole. So incredibly proud to have worked with you, with Councilmember Gonzalez, and with the mayor's office um, to change our family medical leave policies to address this critical gap uh, as it applies to families that are needing time off to be with their child, um, to be with their partners, or to grieve the loss of their child. Uh, I just want to say thank you again for helping to illuminate uh, the short but incredibly impactful life that B has had, to sparking this policy change, to ensuring no other family has to suffer the same experience, and to making sure that we lifted up the voice um, of not only B and you as their parents, but to making sure that there's lasting change. So much more to do, and thanks to Aaron and Rachel, B's brave parents, um, for helping to set this path for, path for comprehensive policy change. Happy B's Day again. Thank you, Councilmember Mosqueda. Okay, any last comments? Are we ready to vote? Thank you very much for those fine presentations from Councilmember Gonzalez and Councilmember Mosqueda. Okay, please call the roll on the passage of the bill. Mosqueda? Aye. O'Brien? Aye. Pacheco? Aye. Sawant? Aye. Bagshaw? Aye. Gonzalez? Aye. Herbold? Aye. Juarez? Aye. President Harrell? Aye. Nine in favor, none opposed. Bill passes, and the chair will gladly sign it. Thank you. Let's clap on that one. Please read the report of the Select Committee on Citywide Mandatory Housing Affordability. The report of the Select Committee on Citywide Mandatory Housing Affordability. Agenda Item 2, <laughs> Council Bill 119-500, related to Land Use and Zoning Amending Ordinance 125791 to correct map errors contained in Map A for 23.58B.050, Map A for 23.58C.050, and Attachment 1 to Ordinance 125791. The committee recommends the bill pass. Councilmember Gonzalez. Thank you, Mr. President. Colleagues, as I mentioned uh, last week during our Select Committee on the Citywide Mandatory Housing Affordability, um, 
uh, meeting and this morning uh, during council briefing, this council bill represents a set of technical changes to the citywide mandatory housing affordability ordinance that this full council adopted in May of 2019. All of you attended that committee hearing last Monday and heard from Ali Panucci of Council Central Staff the particulars of the technical changes included in this version of the bill, so I won't belabor the point today. Uh, but those changes, as a reminder, are strictly limited to ensuring that the maps and code language reflect the appropriate payment levels for development capacity as determined by the City Council in previous policy conversations, as well as making sure that all of the code language accurately reflects the many policy choices made by the City Council in its deliberations of the original passed citywide mandatory housing affordability ordinance. Otherwise, there are no substantive policy shifts or modifications to those legislative policy decisions made by this uh, city council in May of 2019. With that being said, the Select Committee on Citywide MHA recommends that the full council adopt Council Bill 119500. Very good. Any questions or comments? If not, please call the roll on the passage of the bill. Mosqueda. Aye. O'Brien. Aye. Pacheco? Aye. Sawant? Aye. Bagshaw? Aye. Gonzalez? Aye. Herbold? Aye. Juarez? Aye. President Harrell? Aye. Nine in favor, none opposed. The bill passed and the chair will sign it. Please read the report of the Finance and Neighborhoods Committee. Please read the shirt title on agenda item number three. The report of the Finance and Neighborhoods Committee, agenda item three, Council Bill 119528, relating to historic preservation and imposing controls upon the Seattle Tower. The committee recommends the bill pass. Customer Bagshaw. Thank you very much. This ordinance will impose controls on Seattle Tower. It was formerly known as the Northern Life Tower at 1212 30th 3rd Avenue. The building was originally nominated um, about 40 years ago in 1974, but due to ongoing negotiations and various changes in ownership, we're only just now making the designation official. Um, and many of you will remember um, this building is very interestingly designed. Uh, Tall Tower is one of the tallest um, in, this, in the Seattle area after Smith Tower. But it starts to, um, with darker brick on the bottom and gets lighter and to, they have almost white brick on top and it's supposed to be reflective of Mount Rainier and specifically what will be landmarked will be the exterior of the structure and the lobby recognized for various protections and the committee moves adoption of 119528. Very good. Any questions or comments? If not, please call the roll on the passage of the bill. Mosqueda? Aye. O'Brien? Aye. Pacheco? Aye. Sawant? Aye. Bagshaw? Aye. Gonzalez? Aye. Herbold? Aye. Juarez? President Harrell? Aye. Nine in favor, none opposed. Bill passed, Chair of Senate. Please read the next agenda item, the short title, please. Agenda item four, Council Bill 119529, relating to historic preservation, opposing controls upon the Mount Baker Community Club Clubhouse. Committee recommends the bill pass. Mr. Bagshaw. Thank you. Um, this second ordinance will impose controls on the Mount Baker Community Club Clubhouse located at 2811 Mount Rainier Drive South, and it was built in 1914. And I want to say thanks to the community members who came to my committee now 10 days ago. Uh, this landmarking will ensure the preservation of the site and the building's exterior, and it's believed to be associated in a very significant way with the economic heritage of the community in Mount Baker. So thank you for that, and we move adoption of 119-529. Are there any comments? That please call the roll on the passage of the bill. Mosqueda? Aye. O'Brien? Aye. Pacheco? Aye. Sawant? Aye. Bagshaw? Aye. Gonzalez? Aye. Herbold? Aye. Juarez? Aye. President Harrell? Aye. Nine in favor, none opposed. Bill passed and chair will sign it. Please read agenda item number five, the short title. Agenda item five, Council Bill 119530, relating to historic preservation, opposing controls upon the University of Washington, Parrington Hall. Committee recommends the bill pass. Yes, Mayor Bagshaw. Thank you. This ordinance will impose controls upon Parrington Hall, which is located at 4105 Memorial Drive Northeast on the UW campus. Many of us have actually had classes there or taught there. And it was built in 1902, Parrington Hall. It's now the home to the Evans School of Public Policy. The designation will preserve the exterior of the building and the interior room volumes and skylights on the third floor east and west. And you may notice in some of the original photographs that it was white. And at the, originally it was painted white to be part of the um, 
1906 fair, so it has now been restored to its original brick exterior, and it meets the following standards for designation, uh, significant aspect of cultural, political, and economic heritage on the UW campus. So we move adoption of Council Bill 119530. Very good. Any questions or comments? Councilmember Pacheco. Uh, well, I appreciate that certain elements of the building will be, reserved, will be preserved. Uh, I am very happy and ecstatic to learn, that, to see the project move forward and, and that the Evans School get a new building because it was long overdue, having spent a couple years in that basement. <laughs> <laughs> very good. Any other questions Third or comments? Third being better than the basement. <laughs> okay, so if not, thanks, Councilmember Pacheco. Please call the roll on the passage of the bill. Mosqueda. Aye. O'Brien. Aye. Pacheco. Aye. Sawant. Aye. Bagshaw. Aye. Gonzalez. Aye. Herbold. Aye. Juarez. Aye. President Harrell. Aye. Nine in favor, none opposed. Bill passed and share of Senate. Please read items six and seven. Agenda items six and seven, appointments 1350 and 1351, reappointments of Tyus Marvelous and Christopher Maycutt as members, Community Involvement Commission for a term to May 31st, 2021. The committee recommends these appointments be confirmed. Councilmember Bagshaw. Great, thank you, and I'll speak to both of them. The reappointment of Tyus Marvelous as a member of the Community Involvement Commission. This is her first uh, term. She was raised on Beacon Hill. She's a Cleveland High School graduate. She works at the Department of Social Health Services where she assists co customers meeting able-bodied adults without dependence work requirements through various activities that lead to their self-sustainability. She's been involved in her community as an executive board member of the Coalition of Black Trade Unionists. Uh, she's a charter member on the Labor Council for Latin American Advancement and a member of the NAACP. We welcome her to the committee. And secondly, we have a reappointment of Christopher Maycutt to the Community Involvement Commission. He's served a term already. Um, he was born on Capitol Hill, raised in Finney Ridge, and he's created and managed the uh, Canyon Organic Cafes and currently works as a business membership coordinator for the Finney Neighborhood Association. We welcome the reappointment of Mr. Maycutt and the new appointment for Thais Marbellis as a member of the Community Involvement Commission. Any questions or comments? I just want to say I'm very pleased that they are being reappointed, which means that they found their engagement meaningful and the community is better for it. I'm really pleased when I see these kinds of reappointments to this uh, community involvement. Thank committee. you very much. Um, and I do want to stand corrected that Thais, this is a reappointment for her. Yes. I know. Cause I was Thank you. I got it. I, was, I would think you're being very, <laughs> very gracious. Okay. Uh, any other questions? Those in favor of confirming the appointments, please vote aye. 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 Those opposed vote no. The motion carries and appointments are confirmed. That will conclude our agenda. Is there any further business to come before the council? Okay, if not, we stand adjourned and everyone have a great rest of the day. Thank you.